Well, turns out cornbread really needs to, it's not moist like cake. It's hard to deliver lines while you're trying to swallow. And so there were so many cakes when the cornbread's falling out of my mouth and it's awful. And I thought, I should have just eaten the damn cake. Hi, Amelia. I'm good, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. I'm over your shoulder. I see Nicolas Cage, I see Keanu, I see yeah. Good Burger. That would be a Keenan reference. What else we yes. got? What's on the wall up there? Um, Star Wars, of course. There's a uh, Bobby's Bobby's World. Do you remember that cartoon? Sure, of course I do. Yeah, <laughs> Howie Mandel. Oh it's a lot of my knickknacks and crap. <laughs> and all of that is all original, old, collectible. It yeah, looks. for the most part, the the cookie jar is a little new, but you know, right? Well, yeah. Done. Thank well, you. Well, you get a ten. Thank you. I appreciate it. And to add to the nostalgia, if I could tell my eight year old self that I would be sitting here having a conversation with the Gordon Bombay, he would not believe it. Well, you know, the only thing that's missing in that collection that I that I don't see. Oh yeah. man. So that is beautiful. For- Currently for sale on the Disney website. <laughs> I, I, have, I have no idea, but I'm sure it will be now that we've done this and it's immortalized. And yeah, immortalized. and you just cost me probably like a hundred bucks because I'm definitely buying one. <laughs> well, uh, in terms of, um, you know, the Mighty Ducks Game Changers, the last time we saw Gordon Bombay 25 years ago, he had won the Junior Goodwill Games. He took a job with that organization. And now we catch up with him and he kind of hates hockey again. <laughs> uh, what happened? That's a really good question because when, when the show opens, he's sleeping in, on a couch in his office. He's eating leftover cake and pizza from kids' birthday parties. He's inherited the ice palace from, from his mentor, Jan. It's, his life did not end up the way he thought it would. And he's, he's a bit of a sad sack and he's, and he's kind of disengaged from life and the world. And it, um, yeah, things didn't go the way that Bombay had expected they would. And so, yeah, he has a, he has a love hate relationship with hockey. And over the course of the show, we learn why, and we learn why he's arrived at this place. I, I, you know, I don't know how many episodes you've seen, but I don't want to give too much away. Um, but rest assured, he does evolve. He does come out of his shell thanks to Lauren Graham's character, Alex, and the kids using his ice rink as a place to train and get ready for, you know, their, their, the new adventure as, um, as the Don't Bothers, the, the, mm. the, uh, the new hockey team. So as a result of that, they pull him out of his shell and he reengages and he becomes the Gordon Bombay that we all know and love and remember. We both know you can make such a big difference with these kids. I have spent my entire life chasing hockey and I have absolutely nothing to show for it. You have us. Your path is running easy. Hmm. Speaking of the cake that you mentioned that he's, he's picking up scraps from birthday parties, as I was watching it, I wondered how much cake did Emilio actually eat during this shoot? So let me tell you about the cake. Um, I had this brilliant idea and I went to the prop department and I said, look, I don't want to eat a bunch of sugary cake. Can you guys like make me, make me a um, um, cornbread instead? And we'll coat the cornbread with, with frosting and no one will know. Well, it turns out cornbread really needs to, it's not moist like cake. It's hard to <laughs> swallow. It's hard to deliver lines while you're trying to swallow. And so there were so many takes when the cornbread's falling out of my mouth and I'm choking on it and it's up in my nose and it's awful. And I thought, wow, what a horrible mistake. I should have just eaten the damn cake and, and been done with it. But I was, I was trying to be healthy. And it was a really, really poor choice. I'm guessing you didn't see the sign. I hate hockey and I don't like kids. You run an ice rink. Weird, huh? Anyway, yeah, I don't recommend it. Um, uh, and we did a lot of takes and um, yeah, I had a lot of, a lot of really nasty frosted covered cornbread, which again, <laughs> it's better when dipped in some beans and some barbecue sauce, I guarantee you. <laughs> well, the intentions were good, it sounds like. Um, when some actors are, are very well known for a role they played a couple decades ago, sometimes they shy away from revisiting it or talking about it. Why was it that you wanted to come back to Gordon Bombay all these years later? That's a good question. And when you look at sort of the, 
the, the trajectory and the dynamic of sort of where I've been for the last 25 years, I sort of exited uh, mainstream fare with the Mighty Ducks 3. It was like that year I, I did Ducks 3, I did Mission Impossible with the first installment. I'm, I'm killed in the first 10 minutes. But, but then from that point on, I kind of went off into the wilderness, as I like to call it, and did independent films. I was directing, I was writing. I wanted to serve that part of myself that, uh, you know, where I, I wanted to be considered an artist as opposed to just an actor for hire. And, and I needed to do that on my own. So it's, it's in a way, the re-entry using the Mighty Ducks Game Changers to back into uh, mainstream fare, I would like to say that it was part of the plan. Um, and, and maybe it wasn't my plan, maybe it was God's plan, but either way, uh, I'm, I'm going with the program and it feels like a really sort of organic and, and, and right thing to do, a well-timed thing to do now, especially as we're all sitting indoors. You know, it's um, anybody who is committed to doing a, a, a streaming show in the last year uh, looks like a, you know, like a genius. So, <laughs> you, know, you, you have a very captive audience. Yeah. When you think of back on making those original movies, what are some of the, the special moments that stand out to you? So, I mean, I, I grew up, um, you know, as a sports kid, I played soccer, I ran track. I love being part of a team. Um, I, you know, I never had a coach like Bombay. I never had a guy that was sort of a father figure and, and sort of that coach that was that inspirational, basically had coaches in my life who would say, you know, just play better, just <laughs> run faster. So, that, so I never really had that, that coach slash father figure as a, as a high school athlete. Um, so for me to be able to sort of play that role and embody and that, the, that character of Bombay and be able to be the inspiration, not only for the whole team, but be the father figure to Charlie, uh, Charlie Conway, the, the Josh Jackson character, that, that all spoke to me, um, not just as an actor, but just as a, as a human being. And, and those were some of the qualities that, that I really enjoyed um, imparting into the character. Hmm. I had read that you had to learn to skate for the original movies. Is that something you kept up or did you have to relearn to ice skate? Yes. <laughs> I, of course, I told the uh, producers and the uh, director of the first film, when, when asked if I could ice skate, I said, oh yeah, no, my whole life, yeah, I'm, I'm great. Truth is, I, I, I had maybe skated once or twice at Woolman Rink in Central Park as a kid at six, five, and hadn't put on skates since then. So no, I was a disaster. And so I had, I had to learn uh, at 30 years old and they had set up a hockey camp for us in Minnesota. And I was three weeks away from having to report for work and report to this hockey camp. And I knew that if I showed up and I didn't know how to skate, the kids would make fun of me and I would never ever be taken seriously as, a, as their coach. So I trained every day for three weeks before I got on the plane to, to begin the hockey camp. Uh, the kids still made fun of me, but at least I didn't, I didn't fall as much as I did this last time. I, I did not keep up my skating. Uh, I did not um, train in the same way. I thought it would be like riding a bike. And I was uh, quickly um, reminded that it's absolutely nothing like riding a bike. And, uh, and it's, you know, it's something that you really have to practice to be good at. Uh, the Mighty Ducks was one of those movies that was so important to me as a kid. Like I just used to daydream about being one of those players playing for Gordon Bombay. And we used to play a lot of street hockey and mm. I used to go out and always try to do the knuckle puck. That doesn't work in real life. The knuckle no. puck doesn't. <laughs> no, no, it's a, that's, that's a, that's a movie thing. Um, just, just want to tell you it's a movie yeah. thing. <laughs> Well, I wish I would have known it then <laughs> because I looked like a real fool trying to flip a puck on its on its edge. <laughs> right. No, it's so funny. <laughs> Did you have a movie um, for yourself that like captured your imagination in that same way when you were younger? Uh, I, I mean, I love Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I always imagined that I would be one of those kids that, you know, had the golden ticket and, and got the tour of the, of, of the, of the chocolate factory. That, that was one of those films. And I remember I was on location with, 
the family bit. My dad was shooting a movie called Badlands in a little town called La Junta, uh, Colorado. We were living in a house in, in, the, in, this, in the center of town. There was a, a movie theater down the street. And that was back in the day when, you know, movie theaters would play films for weeks on end and hold them over because that's just what you did. And I remember going to see that film over and over and over and just like you, imagining mm-hmm. myself as one of those kids. And I was 10 at the yeah. time. You've had uh, such a long, successful career with so many notable characters. When fans see you out on the street and they're across the street, what is the line that they yell at you? The line from Young Guns, I'll make you famous. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I'll make you famous. It's something that I said in the film right before I killed someone. So I've, it always puts me a little bit on guard. Right. <laughs> well, I have to say, uh, I loved this show so much and... I'm so happy that you're back because there's a certain comfort to seeing you on screen playing this character. It was like, you know, wrapping myself in my childhood. So thank well, you for and, coming back to this role. Well, well, and thank you. And, and, and thanks for saying that. And that's kind of what our goal was, I think, with with the world being so upside down and and obviously so much loss with this with this horrible pandemic and so many people hurting, uh, not just through the, the, the disease alone, but, but also what they've lost in terms of jobs and businesses. And, and so we felt that we would be giving people an opportunity to tuck into something that felt comfortable, that felt familiar, that felt safe in a world that feels so unsafe every single day. And so I think that, I, I hope that we have accomplished that and we've given people a moment just to, to smile. And, you know, my son said, when I was talking about doing this, um, my son, who's he's now 36 years old, but I said to him, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking about doing the show. And he thought about it for a second. He says, I think you're going to make a lot of people very happy. And so. Mission accomplished. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I, I'm so happy about it. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. See you man. Bye-bye. Bye. I gotta cut you. I mean, at this age, if you can't be great at hockey, don't bother. Don't bother? Mom, please. Shouldn't kids be able to play sports for fun? We are out of here. The Ducks don't get to take hockey away from you. Stories without a few letdowns are boring I want you to think about all the other kids who've been told that they're too small or too slow. They just want to get out there and play. Freaks. Is he doing a trick? Let's start our own team. Look at this, your first teammate. I would not be an acid physically. I have more of a podcast body. The true measure of a person is not in how many times they fall down, but it's how many times they pick themselves back up. You gotta make this happen for yourself.